<laughs> Welcome to The Late Show. I'm your host, Stephen Colbert. First of all, happy, happy... <laughs> happy Thursday to you all. The midterms are not until the fall, but recently we've seen some major primaries that will be determining who will be going head-to-head -head on November 8th. Case in point, pack your yanglings, your cheesesteaks, and whatever grit he's made of, because we are heading down to the Keystone State, where the governor's race is heating up between Pennsylvania Democratic Attorney General Josh Shapiro, seen here trapped in a grape-flavored escape room, <laughs> and Pennsylvania Republican State Senator and Meatball asking, hey, you gonna finish that meatball? <laughs> Doug Mastriano. Josh Shapiro is presently leading in the polls, but Mastriano is making headlines, mostly because, without getting too technical, he is banana balls. <laughs> How so? Well, for one thing, he chartered buses to the Stop the Steal rally of January 6th and was part of the mob that marched on down to the Capitol. So no surprise, if he wins... You were a little late. You were late with your booing. You gotta get faster with that next time. <laughs> If he wins, he's pledged to purge Pennsylvania's election rolls, forcing everyone in the state to have to re-register to vote. It explains... <laughs> that one was too early, but thank you. <laughs> it explains his yard signs, vote Mastriano while you still can. In recent weeks, Mastriano has come under fire for his association with the far-right social media platform Gab, a safe haven for white supremacists, anti-Semites, and other extremists. So it's like Twitter, except... Yeah, it's Twitter. It's basically... It's, <laughs> it's Twitter. Mastriano has been endorsed by the founder of Gab, Christian nationalist and groomsman who keeps inviting you to his suite at the La Quinta, <laughs> Andrew Torba. Torba, who is openly, virulently anti-Semitic, says he supports Mastriano because, quote, Doug is an outspoken Christian. We're going to build a coalition of Christian nationalists, and we're going to take this country back for the glory of God. Jesus Christ! <laughs> Should get a restraining order against this guy. <laughs> the governor's race is not the only one to watch in Pennsylvania. There's also a heated Senate matchup between Democratic Lieutenant Governor John Fetterman, seen here after the photographer said... <laughs> seen here after the photographer said, hey, let's do a silly one. <laughs> and quack TV doctor... <laughs> and stepdad Dracula, Mehmet Oz. <laughs> polls show Fetterman leading by double digits, which might be... Which might be because Pennsylvanians want to have a senator who is actually from Pennsylvania. <laughs> Dr. Oz lived and voted in New Jersey as recently as the 2020 election. So Fetterman has gone full troll on Oz's Garden State ass, even starting a petition to add Dr. Oz to the New Jersey Hall of Fame. <laughs> that is lovely. That is really nice. Mm -hmm. If inducted, he would join such luminaries as Bruce Springsteen, Tommy from the song Living on a Prayer, <laughs> and the word Gabagoo. <laughs> Fetterman has also enlisted the help of other famous New Jerseyans to attack Dr. Oz's fake Pennsylvania credentials. Just look at this video he recently put out. Yo, Dr. Oz, Stevie VZ here. What are you doing in Pennsylvania? Everybody knows you live in New Jersey and you're just using your in-laws address over there. And you do not want to mess around with John Fetterman. Trust me, he's a little out of your league. Nobody wants to see you get embarrassed. Counterpoint. I do. <laughs> hey, hey, Dr. Oz. Gabagool. What's the matter, Dr. Oz? Speaking of absolute frauds, you can't trust everything you see on the Internet. I know that may be hard to believe, but trust me, I read it on the Internet. <laughs> And when an internet story is wrong, media outlets often issue fact checks, but the fact checks never get the publicity that the original crazy story did. So we're going to check in on the world of fact checks in my long running fact check segment, Fact Check Check. How many facts could a fact check check if a fact check could check facts? <laughs> First up, 
I'm getting fact-checked that this is not a long-running segment. <laughs> this is the first time we've done it. I'm sorry. <laughs> Second, we were all upset when we learned one of our favorite Mexican-themed desserts was being discontinued last week, but some people online were even more upsetter when a headline started circulating claiming Klondike's Choco Tacos canceled by woke mob after almost 40 years, <laughs> blaming recent allegations of cultural appropriation. Please, if the woke mob had canceled the Choco Taco, I'm pretty sure the Choco Taco would have its own stand-up special on Netflix. <laughs> and social media users started sharing that fake headline, forcing Klondike to explain yet again that we have experienced an unprecedented spike in demand across our portfolio and have had to make very tough decisions to ensure availability of our full portfolio nationwide. You see, it wasn't wokeness, just normal business reasons. They had so much demand for their product line that to keep up, they had to eliminate the Choco Taco and all of its popular toppings, like tableside chocomole. <laughs> so the Choco Taco is gone and it's never coming back. And what's it? I'm being fact-checked. Klondike is gonna bring back the Choco Taco. <laughs> that was for nothing. It's a useless waste of time. Next up on the check wagon, last week, several news sites published articles claiming that a NASA scientist had recently issued a warning to astronauts against masturbating in space. <laughs> because in space, no one can hear you scream, shut the door! <laughs> According to the fake headlines, NASA banned space spanking because it allegedly could impregnate multiple women. <laughs> Come on. Masturbation doesn't lead to impregnating women in space. Captain Kirk does. <laughs> but... Turns out, it was a fake headline. And there is no ban on space self-exploration. <laughs> so, astronauts... I'm far when ready. <laughs> there is, uh, there's also some shocking news out of Hollywood. We have learned that the DC Comics film Batgirl will be completely shelved by Warner Brothers, which means they will not be releasing the movie on any platform. That is terrible news for Gotham City. Without Batgirl, who's gonna fight, I wanna say, the Penguinette? <laughs> Lady Joker? You almost never see a movie studio bail on a project this completely, especially since they've already spent an estimated $90 million, which they are now taking as a tax write-off. It explains Warner Brothers' next movie, The Deductible Hulk. <laughs> we got a great show for you tonight. My guests are James Taylor and actor Coleman Domingo. But when we come back, CNN's in trouble, and I'm the only one who can save it. Stick around.